happy Saturday, Risers. We hope you're having a phenomenal Labor Day weekend. Sagar and I are back with some of our favorite moments from the week. That's right. Following the RNC, author Ryan Gadurski gave us his reasoning for the RNC speaker choices and the convention messaging overall. Here's what he said that Republicans lacked. There's 42 million non-college educated white Americans who are not even registered to vote right now. And there has been no appeal whatsoever to sit there and move to them. There are, Trump's doing fabulously in the polls with Hispanics, better than anyone ever predicted. He's probably gonna get close to 40% and probably close to 50% of Hispanic men. Absolutely, and they're not voting on it, like his, you know, he's promising them amnesty. He's promising them job wage, wage increases. And, and mm -hmm. that's what they care about. You know, I think that the conversation that the Republicans can't understand yet is what the working class want is dignity. They want to know that they care about their dignity to have a decent life. They're not looking for miracles, but they're just looking for something to sit there and say, hey, if I get into a car accident, I don't want my life gone. And, I, you know, we probably have bad drugs in the community and we have been left to die in a lot of these cities. Um, and I think the biggest problem that Republicans are missing is they don't have a larger national vision. Yeah, I thought that was really well said. And, and that's the thing about the RNC. It was, overall, it was a mixed bag. And look, last week we were like, wow, I think this could be turning, you know, first couple of days. Then all of a sudden things just started to go right kind of back to where they were. Trump's talking about the stock market in Pennsylvania again. All the polling basically on every single thing shows Biden up by almost a two to one margin of trust on every single issue. And so without a larger national vision, you leave yourself extraordinarily vulnerable. And this is what you end up with. Indeed. Uh, American Airlines made headlines this week. The company's announced that it could cut flight capacity and furlough 19,000 employees when federal aid to that industry expires next month. President of the International Flight Attendants Union, Sarah Nelson, brought us up to speed on where aviation employees are with the probability of layoffs. We've had 57 million people now file for unemployment. And if I'm going to talk about the airline industry alone, we put in place the most effective jobs program in all of coronavirus relief in March. And that is um, keeping people in their jobs, connected to their health care, continuing to get a paycheck. But that ends on September 30th. And right now what you're seeing is the airlines planning for October 1st without those federal dollars to keep people on the jobs. And what that also does is it does away with the requirement for these airlines to continue to serve all of our communities. So while you gave the example of American Airlines, American Airlines is one that has decided to fly as much as they possibly can. Some of the other airlines numbers are much, much less. So we're seeing a drastic reduction in capacity and the airlines carry our mail as well. So our mm -hmm. communities are going to suffer along with our jobs. And, you know, the way that they structured the airline bailout, actually, she's right. It should have been a model for the, the entire country. Yeah. country, right? This is, they basically did with the airlines what other countries did for everyone, and it was successful. But now it's running out, and guess what? Congress didn't do anything oh. to extend it or keep it going. Great. So now we're going to have massive cuts there and massive cuts everywhere. Makes a lot of sense. Very cool. The Movement for a People's Party held its inaugural convention last weekend with major headliners, including Dr. Cornell West, Nina Turner, and Marianne Williamson. Former Democratic presidential candidate Marianne Williamson herself discussed her remarks at the People's Convention with us this week. Here's what she said about the importance of a third party. But when it comes to politics, we don't have the variety of choices that we should have. We don't have a, um, uh, a situation where everybody, no matter what our political viewpoint, as long as it is within the purview of reasonable political debate, necessarily feels heard. And I think that's what's happened to uh, progressives uh, in the United States today. We feel politically homeless. And that, of course, has to do with the contest and the struggle between the corporatists and the progressives in the Democratic Party. So I'm not tied to the specifics of a formation of a third party. What I am very attached to, however, is an expansion of the conversation so the progressives are not left out. And, you know, she made an interesting point about the way that third parties throughout history, though they've been rarely been successful, that they have put issues on the table that have been adopted by the major parties and have effectively pressured the two major parties to have to respond. So I thought it was interesting to hear from her no, on that. She's absolutely correct on that. That does it for us. We're going to be back later today with the week that was in media screw-ups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our videos. Don't forget to like and share as well. And tomorrow we're going to be back for another round of Hashtag Rising Cues. We'll see you guys then.